In order to create our story, we need to go down. So let's just scroll down until we see stories over here. I'm going to click on new. That will create the new story. Let's give it a name like presidential presidential elections. Okay. And now we see we need to start adding slides. So uh, well, we need to decide also the size. So let's make it like a, for for tablet computers. All right. I'm going to choose the first visualization. So we have slide number one. Choose a visualization. We are going to select the one who won where. We are going to begin with that. Who won where. So what Flores would do would be to upload our first map over here. While it does that, we could create a new slide. All right. So um, there you go. We have our first map over here. We are going to create a new slide. Our second slide is going to be, a, let's say, Republican votes, right? The percentage of Republican votes. I'm going to click on that. That's going to load my second map, the one, the one that only contains Republican votes. The third one is going to be Democratic votes. Choose a visualization, Democratic votes. That's going to load the third map. Then the fourth map is going to be the bubble map of Republican votes. And total Republican votes, that's the bubble map of Republican votes. New slide, one that, once that loads, I can click on new slide and select choose visualization, total Democratic votes. And then the final slide, for some reason, I want those scatter plots there at the end, just to make a point about relationships between the data between the data and the data set. Choose a visualization, that's going to be a relationship, percentage of minorities, and percentage of Democratic or Republican vote. So now we have a story with six steps. Now I have not written anything, but we could add like a little caption for each one of the steps of our of our story. Here I could click on that and then just write anything, all right, like a little intro. I could go to the first one and add text saying the um, who, won, where, right? And so that would be like some sort of title over here. Um, then here I could, this is a Republican vote, okay? Republican candidate, the Republican candidate won in more um, counties. Um, I mean, that are mostly rural, because he won, not in, only in rural counties, but he won in many counties, but in general, they are more sparsely populated than those counties that voted for the Democratic candidate. So I could make a point about that here as a caption. All right, I could make another point over here. This is the Democratic vote. I could make here, you know, a candidate, the Democratic candidate won in fewer counties, but uh, she won in counties that are more densely populated, right? So I could I could make that point over here. Same thing with the bubble maps and so on and so forth. And what I have right now, as I said, is a sequence of maps. So if I click on next, it will load the second map. And as you can see, it has an, a nice animated transition. If I click on next, that's the third map. That will be democratic vote. If I click on next, that's the total number of votes. And then if I click on next, that's the total democratic votes. And then if I click on next, I will get all the, the scatter plots in the, in the sequence. It will take a little bit to load because those are many, 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 many data points. And as usual, you can export these. You cannot, in, in a story, by the way, you cannot export each one of the maps as you do, right, with, a, um, a, with individual graphics, right? The only thing that you can do is to publish these, share and embed. So I can go over here, publish, share and embed, and just copy and paste these onto, on, on my website. If for some reason you wanted to export any of these maps to use in, on a print graphic, for example, you will need to go back to your shelf, click your shelf, sorry, to your shelf, and then click on whichever map you want to uh, export, such as, for example, who won where. And then once it loads, again, you need to go to export and publish, download image as an SVG, download, and that will download that map. And again, that you can open up in Adobe Illustrator for further, a further styling to use it in your own publication. There you go, that's the map. As you can see, the scale has not been exported but you can recreate it easily in Adobe Illustrator with a series of rectangles. Anyway, so this is just an introduction to what you can do with, with Flourish. I encourage you to uh, take a look at the other many, 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 many options that the program uh, has. It's a very exciting development, I think. It's a tool that I believe has the potential of unleashing a revolution in visualization, particularly in a smaller uh, in, in a smaller newsrooms, uh, you know, places such as the New York Times or ProPublica or the Washington Post, they all have developers and programmers that can create these graphics basically manually by writing the code. But smaller news organizations or journalistic organizations that only have, you know, five, ten people on stuff, uh, it's hard for them to create these kinds of interactive, interactive graphics easily. Now you have this tool that journalists can use uh, for free, completely for free, and then that anybody 
uh, can use uh, partially for free, at least to create um, a study graphics and some interactive graphics that you can embed in your own website. Anyway, so I hope that you like hope that you liked the tutorials. Please try to practice with um, all the other options that you have over here. Many more templates are coming soon, so I may update this tutorial later on as soon as I discover other cool features that may be worth explaining. Take care.